Also this morning, we'll be looking at a stunning exhibition of the hot rocks, won by some of the movie world's biggest stars. Nora O'Donnell will be our guide. Twelve floors above New York's Fifth Avenue, crowds have been gathering to see jewelry by the company Verdura. There are 550 carats of aquamarines. What? what? How many? 550. <laughs> <laughs> How many necklaces have ever had 550 carats? The many facets of Verdura, ahead on Sunday morning. And the allure of Verdura. Coming up, Verdura, jeweler to the stars. Talk about hot rocks. These cuffs are the ones worn by fashion legend Coco Chanel, made for her by Verdura. The jeweler is marking its 75th anniversary, its diamond anniversary, with a special exhibit. And Nora O'Donnell of CBS This Morning has a sneak peek. Twelve floors above New York's Fifth Avenue, crowds have been gathering to see jewelry by the company Verdura. Founded 75 years ago by a Sicilian duke named Fulco di Verdura, its client list is both bold and refined. Luminaries like Greta Garbo. Verdura designed her watch, and she had a matching bracelet, and she wore them her entire life. Ward Landrigan is the CEO of Verdura. These bracelets were designed for Sarah Jessica Parker, Sofia Coppola, and Whoopi Goldberg. I was looking around, looking around, and there was a beautiful moonstone bracelet. And then I realized that there were shiny diamonds on it, so I bought it. <laughs> <laughs> so was it the moonstones or the diamonds you liked? It was the moonstones, and Verdura made amazing stuff. But Verdura might never have made a single piece of jewelry if he and the fashion designer Coco Chanel had not become friends in the 1920s. Chanel had a lot of jewelry given to her by her lovers, and uh, it didn't suit her look. So how did he end up designing jewelry for her? Based on uh, what I've heard of him, he had no uh, compunction about telling her that <laughs> the jewelry didn't look that good. Verdura started by breaking apart Chanel's jewelry. Then he took the stones and created designs inspired by the Byzantine era. These were the original cuffs designed for Coco Chanel. As you can see, this has, shows a lot of wear. Well, she wore them for 50 years. So did she wear... She wore one on each wrist, sort of like Wonder Woman. Coco Chanel was in some ways the Wonder Woman for Verdura. He said she was the first person to ever take me seriously. If you have the chicest woman in the world as your showcase, you'll go far. And in 1934, Verdura went all the way to Hollywood, lured by the glamour, style, and one of this country's most beloved songwriters. So I understand it was Cole Porter who suggested that the Duke come to America. How did that come about? Parties at that time were several weeks, not for several days. And so that was where the, the two of them met. And he said, you know, Europe is great, but things are happening in the States. Nico Landrigan, Ward Landrigan's son and president of the company, says Verdura got work as a kind of apprentice to a jeweler out west. Very quickly, Verdura became the designer for these great stars of the day. His jewels appeared on Joan Fontaine in Alfred Hitchcock's Suspicion. I think you must be mad. And on Katharine Hepburn in Holiday. Happy New Year, Joni. Ever wonder what a star like Tyrone Power gets his wife for the holidays? He wanted to give his wife his heart gift wrapped for Christmas. Wasn't Aww. that? I know. That's an but instead of his heart gift wrapped, he gave her rubies wrapped with diamonds. He did. What a nice guy. <laughs> By 1940, with Hollywood abuzz and the fashion elite calling, Verdura left the West Coast for New York. So how did a lot of these... Uh, East Coast socialites, these women come to know Verdura and love Verdura. It was sort of a social story rather than about clamoring after his jewelry. But clamoring they were, including the alluring Cushing sisters, Betsy Whitney, Minnie Astor, and Babe Paley. They came by Verdura's wares the old-fashioned way. Their husbands 
bought them for them. So this is called the Paley case. Right. You know, the Paley's were the founders of CBS. I do. Yeah. I do. In 1947, when Barbara Babe Cushing Mortimer became CBS founder Bill Paley's second wife, she also became a key Verdura client. She was considered the best dressed woman in the she, world. She was, and she also was Verdura's muse. Wow. And what about that ring? It's not their engagement ring, but it weighs 22 carats and it's a yellow diamond. But the mounting is Verdura's crown, coronet. He took it from his family crest. Remember, Verdura was a Sicilian duke. His grandmother was a princess. He was born in a palace. He, he grew up in circumstances that we can't even imagine today. But his jewelry was made in humble-looking workshops. This one has been handcrafting Verdura jewelry for 73 of the company's 75 years. We agreed to keep its location a secret for security reasons. They're really artists. And their history makes them invaluable. Of course, they had to commission him in diamonds in their areas. Particularly to Ward Landrigan. He'd been head of Sotheby's jewelry division for some 20 years. And in 1984, he bought Verdura six years after Folco di Verdura's death in London. I had never made one piece of jewelry, but what I did is I went back to the old shops and talked to them. Many Verdura clients prefer to remain anonymous. She's a lovely tall woman, and she said, I really want a nice aquamarine and diamond necklace. But their jewels speak for themselves. There are 550 carats of aquamarines. What? what? How many? 550. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. How many, how many necklaces have ever had 550 carats? That's a lot. Sounds just right for Fulco di Verdura.